Okay, this is going to be quite a short video. Um, you may not be aware, if you have the Kodiak, I've seen lots of messages from people recently saying that they can't start the Kodiak anymore and the engine just goes red line and nothing works. The reason for that is there was an update to the Kodiak recently that made it a lot more realistic. So you can damage and destroy the engine very easily if you don't follow the startup procedures correctly. So I'm going to very briefly walk through starting the procedures correctly. Now, if the aircraft won't start and you've already done the damage to it while you're in a session, your only option because of a, a wrinkle in flight simulator itself is to go back to the main menu and then come back into the simulator. There is no other way that will restore a broken aircraft that is broken in the way that an engine can if it completely fails, which is what you can cause. So I am going to cause it on purpose to show you it. Then I'm going to go back out to the main menu and come back in and show you what happens. So we're going to turn the fuel on. We're going to blow the engine up. Okay. So we're going to cause thousands of pounds worth of damage. So I've turned on the fuel shutoff valves overhead. I've turned on the or off the fuel master shutoff on the center pedestal in the Kodiak. We're going to turn on the master power switch and the avionics bus and okay we are not going to turn on the fuel bump actually we know we'll put it on standby you used to be able to get away with this just sat on standby and we are going to before we get started and this is what's going to cause the damage oh we're going to turn the avionics on as well i've got the, the gtn uh sorry the g1000 nxi i think it's called so that's why this might look a little bit different than you've seen before but don't worry about that that isn't an imp that isn't a problem with this that i'm going to illustrate so i'm going to give it a full fuel and full prop before we get started now watch what happens okay so give it a little bit of throttle as well ignition on starter on Look at that. Look at that temperature. ITT. And we've blown the engine. That's what that noise is. And now we have no way of repairing that. Yeah. So let's go and turn off the starter. Turn off the ignition. And it's a shame actually that there's no smoke and fire belching out of it because there should be. We have just destroyed the engine. Okay, so we're going to go all the way back out to the main menu and load back in again, and then I'll show you how to start the aeroplane without destroying the engine. And the key there was that we gave it fuel and we didn't use a fuel pump either. Now, it used to be that you could get away with that, and you can't anymore because it's realistic. So we're going to put ourselves back in the same parking position. And we're going to do the same again. But this time we're going to be a lot more careful about it. And we'll be absolutely fine. So just waiting for it to load in. Give it a few moments. It's famous last words, isn't it? Loaded very quickly last time and for whatever reason it's loading much more slowly this time probably fitting a new engine in the Kodiak for us. It's probably what it's up to. There's a whole team of invisible mechanics thinks, looking at the old one thinking, what did he do to it? So hopefully, here we go. We've just spawned in. So we're back on the ground at Booker Airfield in Buckinghamshire. We've got the Kodiak again. Shiny new Kodiak with a completely rebuilt engine that hasn't been cooked and burnt to pieces. Okay, so overhead we go and turn the shut off valves on for the fuel we switch on the master shut off valve and we turn on the master power switch and the avionics buses now this is where it's going to become quite important that we do things in the right order we'll wait for the screens to boot up there is a boot up sequence with the nxi g1000 i think it's called nxi i can never remember the acronyms it's a free add-on, by the way. It's in the marketplace, and it improves the 
it actually fixes an issue with the the G1000 with the uh, Kodiak, so it's definitely worth getting. Okay. And things like the tools test and everything work properly now, which is great. So it's doing a um, an alignment test at the moment with the gyros, and that'll all fix itself very soon, and it will all power up. It, the screens will flicker off and back on again as it gets power. There we go. So give it a few more moments. Okay, so we want to start this aeroplane from cold and dark. What do we do? We turn on the fuel pump first. Yeah, not to standby, to on. And we get that noise from it. Yeah. Then we turn the ignition on. Then we turn the starter on. Notice that t change in tone as the draw changes on it. And you let that come up to speed and you can see the numbers coming up. And then we move the th fuel to high idle. Or sorry, low, yeah, high idle. And leave it there. And once that stabilizes, we can push the fuel forwards and we can turn off that fuel pump and we can turn off the starter. Okay. We can then turn on the generators and the alternators and the engine is running. And then you can take the fuel to fully rich and then you can push the propellers all the way forwards. So it's about that first step. You need to put the fuel pump on, then the ignition, then the starter. Then when it's started to spin up, you can move the fuel to high idle. And then as soon as that happens, the engine's essentially running, you can turn the starter back off. Yeah, and the fuel pump. And then you can push the the fuel mixture all the way forwards and the propeller condition all the way forwards. So it's as simple as that. Okay, while we're here, we may as well go for a quick fly, didn't we? So I'm just going to go and make sure I've got the right, the right control configuration. I love the Kodiak. It's one of the planes that behaves the most accurately in terms of flight dynamics. So I've got a, a specific control configuration for it. And the reason for that, you will see very quickly. Um, I should say, come up saying Kodiak in a moment on here. Here we go. Apply. Go back. And resume. And the reason for that is I've got a detent on the... I've got the Airbus throttle quadrant, by the way. So I can go into forwards power. I can also go into reverse pitch, which obviously we're not going to play with today. So if we come off the parking brake and go to take off flaps. So the way I typically configure the Airbus quadrant for the Kodiak is I use the left stick with the detent with a detent on it for the throttle and I use the right throttle stick for the um, the propeller condition. So we'll just do a very quick circuit at Booker here with the Kodiak, just to remind ourselves how fantastic the Kodiak is. Okay. So full throttle. And propel it all the way forward so it's grabbing at the air. So you're getting full, you're actually controlling the propeller RPM with the Kodiak, the pitch is automatic. So we don't have retractable gear on the Kodiak, so we don't have to worry about that either. You will notice in the NXI version of the G1000 that this is north oriented all the time. Sorry, aircraft oriented, not north oriented. So you get a, yeah, it says heading up in the top corner. Other than that, everything is very much as it was before, but some of it just looks a bit tidier. Okay, so we'll turn around to 60 degrees. We'll come back to 
90% on both the propeller and the throttle. Put the flaps up as we accelerate out and then we're not climbing so hard. With the Kodiak you do have to be careful to stay above about 70 knots if you want a nice smooth approach and landing. If you get below 70 you're starting to get into the realm of um, the torque dropping a wing. So if you, you know, if, if one of the wings ends up dragging behind the aircraft because of torque, you're right on the limit of it dropping the wing and it will depart controlled flight rather wonderfully. Okay, so we're just flying out. Let's have a look through the window. The, op the um, visibility in the Kodiak is fantastic. So the amount of, you know, sight you have around the aircraft is brilliant. And it behaves itself wonderfully as well. Okay, so we're going to come back to 50% on the throttle, leaving the propeller on 90. We don't get a klaxon, I don't think, for about the undercarriage in the Kodiak. So you can pull it back pretty much to idle and it won't complain about flaps or, you know, configuration, basically. Okay, so in order to stop ourselves accelerating, we're going to start extending flaps. Almost using them as air brakes for the approach. So there's the runway. So look, we're at 70 knots, so let's just see what happens. I want to illustrate this to you. So we're down way below 70 knots now, and I'm going to give it a boot full of throttle and see what happens. Stall. Stall. Look at it rolling left. Stall. Stall. And you have to kind of fight it with right rudder in order to stop the trailing wing as you your left. You have to stop that trailing wing from stalling. So if you're already slow and that happens, if you go into a s too slow a climb out, for example, you can very easily put this aeroplane in the ground. So you have to be mindful of it wanting to depart to the left if you get too slow and you then try and accelerate. But I absolutely love the Kodiak because although it has these gotchas in its you know, a flight envelope. It's actually remarkably controllable and the short field performance is fantastic. I mean, we don't need to side slip here because we're low and slow already, but if you side slip as well, it's like being in an elevator. I mean, look at it moving around. I mean, we've, we have got about 10 knots crosswind, so that's not helping. Remember, we can't boot the throttle to get out of trouble because it will just corkscrew. And we're down. Flaps down. Of course, the um, the Kodiak has this remarkable ability to do a bit of a party trick, to be honest, where we can put it into reverse. And we can reverse the aircraft. So I'm not going to do it very much. Just showing you that it can be done. And it can turn on a sixpence look within its own length easily. Let's get off the runway in case anybody else comes in. Taxi back on the grass and go and park up again. And again, you get very good sounds from outside in the Kodiak, if you've not seen it before. But yeah, the major takeaway today was just the startup procedure is now accurate in the Kodiak. You can blow the engine to pieces, and you saw how I did it very, very quickly, but just by having the fuel already on rich when I engaged the starter motor. And yeah, the, the, it ignited instantly, the temperature went through the roof.
and we caused an entire write-off of a Kodiak engine. So when anybody says, oh, I can't start my Kodiak, it won't even start, it's because they've blown it up previously. Or well, they didn't follow the correct procedure, basically. Notice what I said about being able to turn this thing around quickly. We'll turn around onto Bay 25 here. I mean, look at that turning circle. It's mad, isn't it? Right, so park and brake on. Obviously, to cut the engine in this is very straightforward. You just cut the mixture. Turn the ignition off. the prop back and it will slowly die but it does so in a very controlled stable manner instead of setting fire to itself which is always good obviously we can then turn the alternators off turn the generators off fuel pump goes to not to on sorry i flicked that the wrong way and this is a problem of flight simulators to be honest and uh, then turn the avia avionics off and turn the master power off and we're good to go and obviously Kodiak got lots of other things like doors and everything work which is always good fun to pretend you're getting out to get some fresh air <laughs> if you've not seen the Kodiak it is wonderful and there's lots of things you can do with loadouts with cargo or passengers and you can do things like opening the various doors and there's a skydiver version of it as well but yeah, it's it's very, very good. You will also get all kinds of little things like the coffee cup holders work, <laughs> uh, which obviously has no functional use, but it's good fun. And for going in and out of short airstrips, it's probably unrivaled in the game, to be honest. OK, so I think that's kind of covered it and then some of what I wanted to cover today. So that's the Kodiak. The Kodiak's available from Simworks Studios on the internet. It's not very expensive, so go and have a look at it. Uh, there's thousands of videos of on the internet. It's a very popular aeroplane. And if you want to see a real-world one flying, go and have a look on YouTube at the, Bush and, uh, the Missionary Bush Pilot. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, and I'll see you again soon.